Mm-hmm. That was huge for me. And then the day of my event, another thing happened that was connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20 minutes before my event, I had just come back from warming up. And we were at a, it was a, an area just on the outskirts of town, and they were going to start the, the 100-kilometer team time trial. I had uh, just gotten off of my bike, and um, the mechanic uh, came and got it, and he was going to go over it one time. When someone bumped into me, and because I'm from New York, you know, I, I was into this, you know, millisecond thing. What, you bumped into me? I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> so, so this person bumps into me and, and keeps walking. And I had my back to this person uh, after he walked by me. Um, so I turned around quickly. This person was probably now about three feet away from me when I heard a pow. So I couldn't tell whether it was a firecracker, which a lot of them went off in Mexico during the Olympics, or whether it was a gunshot. So I'm looking at this guy, and I'm looking at his back, and he staggers two steps, maybe three. Then I see his right elbow, right arm sticking out, and then another shot. He put the pistol in his mouth, and he blew the back of his head off. And I was like six feet away from this guy. I mean, I had blood, brains, skull, you name it. I mean, I was covered. Oh, my God. He falls head first, down on the sidewalk, okay? So he, he's, he's six or seven feet away from me. I mean, I, you know. So all of a sudden, uh, an officer, because they had, they had military guys lining the course, an officer comes up, he yells something out to, you know, a group of soldiers right in front of him. Immediately, they surround the body. They, they're standing, but they surround the body. And another soldier finds some newspaper, and they start putting the newspaper over the body. And, I mean, I'm looking at all of this, and the thing that struck me was this man's blood was flowing down the sidewalk to the edge of the sidewalk and into the street, a stream of blood from him. The soldiers were around him. uh, The papers were on him and this blood was going towards the curb. And this, this to me, I mean, you know, I was, I was shook up a bit and I had all of this guy's, brain material on me, my bike still had, I I mean, it's like unbelievable. So long story short, I run into that young woman a couple of days afterwards. And I asked her, I said, I need to find out what happened that day. I need to find out about this man and why he did this right there in front of the world. So a couple of days before we left to come home, we connect, and she tells me this story. About eight months before, him and his wife and three kids had come into Mexico City from some other region of Mexico. And he had been a farmer, and he had lost his land, his little house, so he came to Mexico City looking for work and couldn't find anything. That morning, he shot his wife and the three kids. And then he came out in front of the world 
at this Olympic event and kill himself. Oh my gosh. How chilling. So, how, how, for I, me, Mexico City, I mean, there was, there was a lot going on. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still fairly political. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the things that happen, aside from, you know, black power, African American, this, that, and the other, um, um, these things, you know, they, they, they stick. I mean, you know, I, I, what I'm telling you here is what I saw, you know, um, it was, it was a bad Olympics. Okay. Mm-hmm. For me, it was a really bad Olympics. You know, take the, take the athletics out, me out of that. It was just a bad Olympics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much misery and suffering going on in that country. Um, 